Hi everyone, I wanted to give you a quick overview of how to do the crime scene, which is the main um, instruction for today, for this week. I'm also going to give you some instructions on how to do the award nomination, just so you can see it. Um, so let me start with the crime scene, so you can see what that looks like. All right, so when you open your own individual Google Slides, it will look something like this. There are some very excellent detailed instructions. Please read them. Um, this is our introduction letter from the chief, letting us know what um, the latest uh, member of the Method Magicians has been up to. I like the name. He's working under the alias Hundredths Don't Say Point. Um, if you watch the lessons, you'll know I referred to that because we don't say point, we say and. The next slide shows your suspects. Um, remember, their favorite number is what comes into play in determining who is guilty. The next slide. Um, we, it tells you where we are, gives you a little background. Um, then in the dark black with the typing, this is what um, the thief has told you. The green, when you see green, this is kind of like as if I'm giving you those instructions. So here you are to determine which one is greater than, less than in each one. So you will just click in the box and you can make the less than or greater than symbols the same way we did in the lesson. Um, again, just my hint to you, remember you need to have the same number of decimal places in order to compare. Don't fall into any traps. Then you're gonna come over here and whichever team, um, okay, so whoever has, whoever wins the most number of matches. So whichever one, one more, Team India or Team Nepal, you will then drag this little yellow box over the answer to mark your answer. You can make it bigger if you want, if you want to make it for the whole, like whatever. That's, you can play with that. So, then you would go to the next clue. So on this one, again, it gives you some information, gives you some directions. Here it has decimals written out in words, and you have to write it as a decimal, and they even give you a number bank to choose from. Um, they recommend that you highlight the ones that you use because to get your final clue, you says add the numbers in the bank that are left over. So you need to mark them so that you know which ones are left. Remember, we talked about adding them, that you want to make sure you line up your decimals. And then it's going to round to the nearest whole number. So remember, if you're dealing in hundredths, you need to be looking at 50 one hundredths. If you're looking at thousandths, it's 500. So make sure you check those. Okay, this is the one that can be somewhat challenging. All right, so we have the great wall of decimals. It says to start here and it starts with an addition problem. You should be able to answer that. Then you take this answer and you put it in down here and then you have a subtraction problem and you get it here. Then you're gonna take this answer and put it down here. Now this has a multiplication problem in it. For the multiplication, you may use a calculator. Now, if it happens that this is a whole number, then don't use a calculator. But if it's a decimal, you can use a calculator. Get this answer, carry it over to here. This is a division problem. I know it's really hard to see, that's a division. You may use a calculator. Then, you get an answer, you transfer it down to this one. This is addition. You should be able to do addition without a problem. By the way, here's the little okay that you can use a calculator. Again, I recommend only for multiplication and division. 
if the addition and subtraction are really tripping you up, then you can use it on those two. And then this answer comes down here. You multiply, get this answer. This answer goes here. Divide to get this answer. And again, when you read the directions, it's going to tell you to make sure you round it to the nearest whole number. Then drag the big box over whichever answer it is. Moving along to this one. All right, this one, you have three questions. You have a business account, a cost of a car, and a cost of sushi dinner. And it wants you to drag the little box to highlight the larger value. So you're comparing. And again, remember, don't forget about the whole number of parts when you're comparing things. That could help. Um, so whenever, whatever one it is, if you want to, in fact, I will, you can even reshape these so that you have them marked either this side or that side, whatever side is larger. So then when you come down here, this is a little trickier because it says the ones digit from Q1 of the one you highlighted. So whichever one you highlighted, you look for the ones digit. Then you're going to, this is a decimal point. I know it doesn't look like one, but that's a decimal point. Then you're looking for the tenths digit from Q2 and the hundredths digit from Q3, and that will make a decimal number here. No rounding on this one. Let's get the decimal. Scene five, this one has no decimals. So relax. Don't worry that you're not seeing decimals. Um, these are going to be big multiplication problems like we've done. And I know this word is spelled wrong and it's really bothering me, but I, I can't fix it because this isn't editable. Okay. So like in this one, 900 packs of beads. Each pack had 30 beads. How much is that? Um, you should be able to do these multiplication problems in your head or no. Yeah, you should be able to do these in your head. We've done these kind of problems. So then it says, which is the smallest? That becomes letter A. Just a hint. It's not going to be a small number. Just the smallest of these. Okay. Just. Uh, scene six. Uh, wants you to tell the value of the underlying digit. Uh, remember, we've talked about this a lot when we were doing multiplication of two-digit numbers. Um, the value of it, in fact, if I'm going to look at this first number, I'm going to go to the one because I don't want to give away the answer. If I were looking at the value of this one, it's really a 10 because it's in the tens place. So I would write 10 in the box. They want you to tell what the seven is. So you have to look at what place value the seven is and write that amount in the box. Then you're going to add all of those numbers together. The good news is only one of them is a decimal, and you can just stick the decimal at the end. It'll be okay. And that'll get you Y. Which brings us to the final step. This is where you take all of those clue answers you've gotten, and you got to do some math to them. So if you'll notice, I also allow you to use a calculator for multiplying C. A times B, you should be able to do yourself. All the adding and subtracting, you should be able to do yourself. But multiplying by C, I'll give you a hint, C is a decimal. So when you go to multiply by C, you may use a calculator. When you are done, you should get a number. Um, if you want to put that number over here so that you have it, then you'll need to look back at your suspects and at their favorite numbers. And whichever one is your number is who you would type in the box. And that's it. That's how you do the crime scene. Now I know at the beginning I said I was going to do, I was going to talk about the awards, but I'm actually going to make a separate video for that. So um, go look for the other video that talks about how to do the award nominations. So this is just for the crime scene. This is what is required for this week. So if you have questions, feel free, ask away. Um, hopefully this is straightforward enough that you can figure out who done it. Okay.